I don't know about you, but to really, for me, to really appreciate the gospel text today, it's very important to read the verses, the two verses that immediately precede the text that we've been given. And they read as follows. All of the people listening to Jesus, even the tax collectors, had acknowledged the will of God in receiving the baptism of John. Whereas the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, in not letting themselves be baptized by him, ignored the will of God. It tells us about the challenge of a free will and the call to discern the will of God and to have the maturity to recognize the presence of God in people, events, and circumstances of daily life. We're invited by God, who loves us, to follow and discern, not by coercion, nor laws and regulations, but by freely choosing to accept God's love for us and to express our gratitude by the way that we in turn live. We stand in awe in the mystery of God, the mystery of God who's present both in history and with us here today. In the first reading, Paul expresses it most clearly when he says, the mystery of our religion is great. See, John the Baptist called people to conversion, to straighten out their lives. And Jesus insists that all must believe in the love of God for them. John's disciples used to fast. And we know that the Pharisees accused the disciples of Jesus for not fasting. The disciples of Jesus are taught to forgive. The disciples of John are attracted to the desert and knew how to let go of conveniences to which they were accustomed. Jesus lives among people and heals their wounds. The baptism of John was a willingness to give up vices while the baptism of Jesus bestows the gift of the Spirit of God. John had come living with a hermit's austerity and the scribes and the Pharisees had said that he was a mad eccentric and that some demon had taken his wits away. Jesus had come living the life of people of that time and entering into all their activities and they had taunted him with loving earth's pleasures too much. See, the scribes and the Pharisees really reproached John for his austerity and Jesus for the lack of austerity. But they were like children, children who wanted everything their way but didn't have the maturity and the freedom to be open to God's grace and to recognize God in what John said and in what Jesus did, to recognize God in every moment, in every person. And I think that's one of the reasons that we see that in the writing to of Paul to Timothy, he talks about the behavior of the Christians. And Jesus is making the same comment about the behavior of the Pharisees and scribes. They're childish. Their inability to move beyond, to discern how God is present in history. See, we're invited to go deeper and not limit ourselves to that perspective of a child, but rather develop a faith worthy of an adult. Jesus asked the question, to what shall I compare this generation? And the reality is that in every generation faces different problems, and no generation can be totally free from the prejudices and the limitations of the culture of that time. Today we celebrate the feast, the martyrs, Cornelius and Cyprian. Cornelius was elected pope. He replaced a pope, Fabian, who was martyred. Cornelius, during a time of persecution, died in exile. Cyprian, shortly after his conversion to Christianity, became a priest. And in the year 2049, interestingly enough, he was elected bishop, elected by the priests and by the laity. And it was seven years later that he died as a martyr. Each generation has experienced the presence of God. Each, each generation has experienced something different. And so too in our time, when I think of both Cornelius and Cyprian, I'm reminded of another leader of our church who was martyred not so very long ago, within the last 40 years. And I'm thinking specifically of Archbishop Oscar Romero, 
Monsignor Romero of El Salvador. And particularly, I think he invites us with his reflection to reflect today on how we're called to discern, discern God present in history. And one of the texts that I read often is the following text. It's from Archbishop Romero, and it reads as follows. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it's beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. And no set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. And this enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that's the difference between the master builder and the worker. We're workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future not our own. Amen. Please stand. As we gather this day, we remember and bring here the, the many intentions that the people who watch us and join us via television have asked that we remember in this celebration. For all of them, for the people who made possible this telecast, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And we pray for the many people that touch our lives day in and day out, that we have the grace to recognize how God works in and through them and touches us. For that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all people, all the victims of violence and warfare, for all of them and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for the gift to be peacemakers, each and every one of us. For that grace for all of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.